In this video, we will discuss nerve impulse transmission across the synaptic gap. First, remember that axons always carry the nerve impulse away from the cell body and dendrites always carry the nerve impulse toward the cell body. Nerve impulses have to travel from one neuron to the next, or from a sensory neuron to an interneuron, or an interneuron to a motor neuron. Neurons do not actually come in contact with one another. Instead, they have a gap referred to as the synaptic gap, or sometimes called the synaptic cleft, that separates the axon of one neuron from the dendrite of the next neuron. The electrical signal must traverse the synaptic gap to continue on its path through the nervous system. Impulses are carried across synapses as the following chemical changes occur. At the end of the axon from which the electrical impulse is coming from, the neural membrane depolarizes as sodium ion gates open and sodium ions flood into the axonal bulb. As sodium ions flood into the axonal bulb, gated calcium ion channels also open and calcium ions are allowed to enter the cell. The calcium ions stimulate contractile proteins to pull the neurotransmitter vesicles to the presynaptic membrane. The neurotransmitter vesicles fuse with the presynaptic membrane and release the neurotransmitters into the synaptic gap by a process called exocytosis. The neurotransmitter then diffuses across the synapse and binds with receptor sites on the postsynaptic membrane. If enough neurotransmitter is present, the action potential will continue on to the next neuron. After the neurotransmitter produces its effect, whether it's excitation or inhibition, the receptors release the neurotransmitter back into the synaptic gap. Enzymes located in the synapse degrade the neurotransmitters and recycle the chemicals for later use. Following is a summary of the steps for nerve impulse transmission across a synaptic gap that we've just discussed.